Praise the Lord and thank you for joining us today. I'm Minister Curtis Dean, the Minister of Music here at First Missionary Baptist Church. We would love to hear how God is using our ministry in your life. If you have any questions about today's sermon or any general questions, please contact us at admin at fmbc-concord.org. Our mission is to lead all people into a life-changing, ever-growing relationship with Christ. Thanks again for joining us today for Sunday services. See you next week. Be blessed. Week three of living a life that counts. Uh, you know, the first couple of weeks, uh, first week we li- learned about uh, making our dash count. And we talked about how we can do that on last week by using our collective potential. And I want to thank all of you who have gone out to the website and who stopped out to the uh, hub and to the connection desk and filled out your cards. But, but there's plenty more of you because didn't we talk about all that we could do if we all just got on board and used all of our gifts and all of our talents? For those of you who came out on Wednesday night, we learned a lot about ourselves just on Wednesday night. We had so much talent right in the room and didn't even know what we had. We had a comedian in there. Uh, <laughs> We had a con- contractor in there. We, we had an electrician and plumber in there. And, and uh, we had coaches in there. All kinds of talent just right here that we already have that we don't need, need to go anywhere looking for. And, and so we're encouraging you to still go on out. You, you, uh, hold up your card. It still should be inside of you. Hold that up for me, Jen. Yeah, hold it up high for me. Yeah, that should be inside of your bulletin there. Uh, just fill it out. Or you can go out online and complete that so that we can get all of that great talent as we continue to do what God is calling us here to do. Now, but one of the things that probably hinders us from doing what we believe God wants us to do is because many of us are still searching and trying to find that thing that would satisfy us, aren't we? How many of you want to be satisfied? Come on, raise your hand. Yeah, yeah that's not sinful. Yeah, yeah, some of you are like, I don't know if I... <laughs> That's, that's not one of those trick questions. How, now, let me ask again. How many of you want to be satisfied? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 but now the, the key thing is, is that I, if, as I ask, I see everybody wants to be satisfied. Now, here's the harder question. How many, are you, how many of you are satisfied? Yeah, fewer hands went up, right? It's okay. To, yeah, some of us should be, but not all of us. Didn't, didn't everybody hand go up that wanted to be satisfied? less than probably 5% went up and said that they are. Why is there such a huge gap between those who want to be satisfied and those who are satisfied? Wouldn't you want it to be closer to 100% of all of us being satisfied? Yeah. Now, now some of us, uh, uh, when we're looking at what we want to satisfy us, uh, I'll hold that. Oh, open your Bibles if you would. Uh, to the book of Matthew, and our host team is coming down. If you don't have one, uh, just raise your hand, and and they'll gladly grant you one. Uh, You can keep that Bible, or uh, if you just needed to use it today, you can turn it back in, Uh, but it's yours to have if you you need one. Uh, And uh, what did I say? The book of Matthew? Uh, Turn to the fifth chapter. And let's look at, uh, let's just look at one verse here. We're gonna, I'm going to talk about a lot of the verses that's there. But let's look at verse number six. Uh, and I'll come from, from the NIV. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Now, uh, you have to understand this verse in context. Uh, the writer of this book is, uh, what's the name of the book? Okay, y'all are smart class. I don't have to teach you everything. All right, so, so the writer is considered to be Matthew. Now, Matthew was one of those disciples that was probably more on the outside. You know how uh, you got some folks who have their inner clique? Y'all, heard, y'all know that. There's, you know, some folks that, you know, they just hang out together. Matthew wouldn't have been one of those that was in the inner circle. In fact, Jesus' inner circle was who? Peter, James, and John. But Matthew uh, didn't hang out with those guys because most of those guys were fishermen. Uh, We got any fishermen in here? Yeah, see, y'all would hang out together, wouldn't you? You wouldn't want to hang out with no accountant, would you? 
You wouldn't, would you? Fishermen and accountants don't go together unless the fisherman is an accountant. Well, see, Matthew was a tax collector. Not only uh, did he not have the same profession, but the profession he had, they didn't even like because he took taxes. How many of y'all like paying taxes? So y'all didn't like Matthew either. Why y'all hating on Matthew? Brother was just doing his job. Why y'all hating on him? So, so, but, but Matthew wrote this book to give an accurate account that Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah that the Jews had been waiting on. So when you read that first chapter, Matthew, you get that long genealogy. And I know some of you stumble through those names and things of that nature, but it's showing you that he had a right to that lineage. Although he didn't have an earthly father, that his father uh, was the one who was from the bloodline of David. And then in that second and, and, and third chapter, uh, you start seeing the life of Jesus. But when you get to the fourth chapter, you see where Jesus went to the Mount of Temptation. And then when he came out from the Mount of Temptation, he started with a a little small phrase he says repent for the kingdom of God is at hand and so when you get to this fifth chapter Jesus now between the fourth and the fifth chapter Jesus began to gather some followers and so now we want to look at the people who want to be satisfied or who are looking for satisfaction and so he goes up on this mountain now and he starts teaching them now, the, 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 the reason for his being on the mountain, there are many people who say which mountain it was. That's not as important that it was a mountain. And if you look at that very first verse in chapter five, I believe it says he went up on a mountain and he sat down and began to teach his disciples. It says something very similar to that. Doesn't it say something about his sitting down? All right. Now, do you know why he sat down? Me neither. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> One of the one of the ways uh, a person, how many of y'all, uh, when you've been to college, you've heard this term that he's the chair of this department or he's the chair of that department. You ever heard that phrase, a phraseology? Where you get that from is really during this time, teachers would sit down to show their place of authority and their power and their position. They didn't stand and do all the talking and teach. I need a chair. I'll get one next time. And, and so and so the teacher would sit. And everybody else would stand. So I know what. Y'all need to stand. And I need. Y'all stand up. Come on, y'all. We're going to be on the mountainside. This is cool. I like this. Now, I know everybody can't stand. Yeah. See, now, y'all on the side of the mountain. And Jesus would sit. And he would begin to teach. So now the people who are looking for satisfaction, some of us are looking for satisfaction. Uh, some of us want fame. Don't raise your hand. Uh, and if you got that fame, you would be satisfied. And some of you would want fortune. And if you got a fortune, you feel that you would be satisfied. And some of you are looking for it in sex. If you got enough of that, you'd be satisfied. Say, easy, easy. <laughs> Stepping on some deacon toes. <laughs> Some of you, some of it, it may be substances that you shouldn't be taking or snorting or drinking, uh, but you're looking for satisfaction. Uh, some of you, uh, some of you are looking for some of the, just the basic things like safety and security. But now some of us got some weird things that are satisfy us, like uh, seeing other people fail. You know, there's some folks who get a satisfaction that seeing other people fail. They hate on, they call haters. Haters been around a long time, right? Then you got those who uh, greed, uh, they just can't get enough. Uh, and, and so they're looking for those to be satisfied. So you got all kind of ways you want to be satisfied. I believe that's about all the standing y'all can take. So y'all go ahead and sit back down. I saw some of you leaning like, they're like. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, so I'll do the heavy lifting. I'll, I'll, I'll do the standing this week. Uh, so the people, everyone is looking for satisfaction. But who are the people that he says blessed are those? Who are those people? Go back in verse number one again. You see them right there? Who are they? This isn't a general proclamation to a general population. No, this is a specific proclamation to a specific group of people. Uh, he says to his disciples. 
So now what is a disciple? A disciple is someone who's following someone. Not only did in those days did they just follow where they went, but they actually ate with them, they slept with them, they, they, everywhere they went they would go. They wanted to learn all of their behavior so that they could act just like them. And after a while you see people who've been around folks long enough, they sort of act like them. They're called children. <laughs> right? Some of you, yeah. And some of our children don't start acting like us until they get older. Right. And then they come home and say, oh, I'm just acting just like you. Ah. Yeah. Isn't that, doesn't that happen? You start you, you don't even want it, but you do it. You know, I, I see myself going like, oh, I act and look just like my daddy. Ah. Yeah. Does it happen to anybody other than me? So so technically your parents are your disciples. And, and because of that, you learn from them so that you can become like them. And always parents want you to do what? Go on just a little bit farther than they went, right? And so Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he's like a new Moses on the side of the mountain giving new declaration. And when he started, he gave them what we have famously called the Sermon on the Mount and the famous list of things called the what? A attitudes, right? They're not, yeah, y'all going, yeah. No, they're not the A attitudes. It's the B attitudes. Yeah, it's the B attitudes. And, and, and the first B attitude is this, blessed are the poor in spirit, uh, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then I think the next one is, blessed are those who mourn, uh, for they shall be comforted. And then it says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. But then he gets to the sixth verse right here. Blessed are those. Hmm. Now, let's just talk about that word bless, because we use it all the time. Don't y'all go around telling me, God bless you, or I want a blessing. How many of you say that? Come on, just, just, yeah. What are you saying? What are you asking? Do you even know what you're asking? Just sounds biblical, doesn't it? Just sounds real good. Like, yeah, I want, bless me, Lord. Y'all just sang it too, didn't you? All the time, God is good. Then it was something, didn't have somebody blessings. Blessings. And, yeah, see, I know. I, some of y'all were, did y'all hear that song? Y'all were singing it, right? So what were you singing? You singing that you want it? Let me give you the short version. I could give you the long, deep detail. But the people who are here that he's talking to, he's saying, blessed are these individuals in all the Beatitudes. That's what the Beatitudes are talking about, being blessed. And that word for blessing means extended favor. That ought to be, you ought to be able to shout just right there. When, when, when you're asking someone or you're saying bless someone or you want a blessing, you're talking about extended favor. That, that, that's, that's just long lasting favor. Now, we, many of us know that ultimately all blessings come from God. Now, they're general blessings. Y'all hear me call them creation blessings. Uh, like that beautiful fall morning. Wasn't that just a cool and crisp fall morning? Isn't it amazing how quickly the temperature changes? I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, it was still 80 degrees when you get up. So that's a creation blessing, meaning that if you're an inhabitant of the earth, anybody in here an inhabitant of the earth? Okay, you really don't want to raise your hand on that, but I'll tell you about that. But how many of y'all are earthlings right now? You live on earth. Anybody live here on earth? Okay, so all of us, are, we are going to get some of the creation blessings, whether you're in church, outside of church, whether you're a sinner, whether you're a saint, uh, whether you believe or you don't believe, the sun is going to shine on everybody. That's a blessing from God, right? And there's long lasting. It's going to rain on us. Uh, food's going to grow. Things are going to happen. There's just some things just going to happen because they're inherently in the whole culture and environment in which God created. Now, uh, but then he's saying my disciples, he's now talking about a covenant blessing. Those who are in a right relationship with God get a covenant blessing. Those are the blessings that other folks don't get. I call them bonus blessings. How many want some bonuses? Yeah, you, yeah some of you go to work, you want some bonuses. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so he's saying to her now, uh, in order to get that bonus blessing, there's some attitudes that have to change. You have to go from an A attitude or to a B attitude. He's saying that your mindset has to change. He says because the individuals who have this kind of attitude,
Beatitudes who are my disciples will be blessed. So those are the people he's talking about. And he's saying that they will he will bless them for their satisfaction. Now, look what he says next. Now, he talks about the pursuit of your satisfaction. Uh, that's your second point there, the pursuit of your satisfaction. Your first one was the people uh, looking for satisfaction. But now we want to talk about the pursuit of satisfaction. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Let's just stop right there. A lot of times we think about our desires as sinful. How many of you have a desire to be something or to do something? Come on, raise your hand. Don't, yeah, if you don't, you're dead. How many of you got a desire to be something or do something? Okay, okay, all right, all right. Every hand should go up. Uh, this word hunger means an ardent craving, a, a starving appetite, uh, a deep desire. Uh, it's not talking about you just ate and you say you're hungry because some of you say you're hungry right now. You're not hungry. You just want more to eat. Most of us can't understand this passage because most of us have never really been hungry. Let me tell you when you've been hungry. When you haven't had anything to eat and you don't know where your next meal is coming from to eat. Now that's hungry. Now if you ate and you haven't eaten but you know where you're going to get your next meal to eat, you're just waiting on your next meal. But in this day and time, there's still nearly a billion people. That's why we're having our mission drive. Uh, in fact, I forgot to tell you, we'll be sending Bibles to developing countries. We'll be buying livestock for developing countries uh, uh, because God has blessed us. Uh, we're to be a blessing. That's right. He's given us what? Long favor. Has he not? How many, how many slept under a bridge last night? That's what I thought. How many got more than one pair of shoes? Mm, that's what I thought. How many got more than one pair of pants or dress or skirt? That's what I thought. Uh, how many got a freezer at home? That's what I thought. How many got an extra freezer at home? <laughs> yes, if you got a refrigerator, you got a freezer. See, every hand should have gone up. That was a trick question. Y'all like, I ain't got no freezer at home. Now, let me ask you a question again. How many of you got a freezer at home? How many of you got something in that freezer? You may not even want it, but it's something in there, right? So, see, when, when he talks about this hunger here, we really can't feel him like they could feel him. Because in that day and time, they didn't have refrigeration yet. So, basically, they cooked what they needed for that day. They may not have had enough. So when he says, for those who hunger, they understood hunger. They understood having this desire. Now, the next one he's talked about is thirst. These are pursuits, thirst. Uh, and, 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 you know, we can live longer without food than we can without water. And to thirst for something, if you haven't had water, uh, I mean, you almost you, you could die. What is it? Three days? About a maximum of three days. Uh, if you really get dehydrated, you might go longer, but your body starts to break down uh, if you don't have water. And in where Jesus was making this statement, it didn't rain much. See, they didn't even need the weatherman because it might have rained five, six times a year. Wasn't much rain. So water was a luxury to have. We're spoiled. How many can go? How many got water running water at home? Yeah, see, that's kind of hard to understand this text, right? But just try to take your mind there. Uh, what he's talking about, I ask you, do you ever desire something? Raise your hand. How many of you really desire it badly? Raise your hand. It's okay. Yeah, you're, here's the thing. There's nothing wrong. He didn't, he, didn't he say, for those who hunger and thirst? He's saying it's okay to have a desire. There's no problem with the desire. The problem is the object of your desire. Say, ouch. Yeah, if you notice all the teaching that I've been teaching, a lot of the things that we think make us unholy, they don't. You're 
supposed to have a desire. You're supposed to have a hunger. You're supposed to have a thirst for something. The problem is what you're thirsting for. That's why we can't get satisfied. You got, I think the Bible says that we're made in God's image. But when we sin, God took something from us, but he left a hole in our heart and our desire. And we keep trying to fill that with other stuff and other things. It messes up our marriages. It messes up our children. It messes up our workplace because some of us would do anything to fill up those desires. He's saying that you need to have the right object, what you're chasing. Then y'all say, chasing after you is all I want to do. You know how it goes? You know how it goes? Come on, give me a little bit. Give me a little bit of that. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Who was singing that? Who sang that? Come on, come on, Melissa. Come on, let me. Come on, come on. I, I, y'all don't want me to sing it. I'm chasing that. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all stand up. Let me hear this. Come on now. We come on. Listen to these words. Come on, come on. Yeah, come on. Sing it right there. Come on. Come on, come on. That's right. Come on. Stand on your feet and sing that now. Come on, listen to that. Get back in the mountain. Come on, throw the words up there. Come on. Come on, listen. Come on. Sing, I'm chasing. Come on, what you doing? I'm getting there. All right. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. I right, just hang it right there. Now, y'all saying I'm chasing after you. No matter, whoa, whoa, say that again, no matter what, you're lying, sit down, come on, come on, you can hang on to that, you might get a little bit more of that, just, just, I shouldn't say that, you're not telling the full truth, because we got guests in the house, they're going to be, you know what he said we were, you, you can sit down, you can sit down, we're going to call you in a minute, but you can sit down. See, now we sing those songs with such fervor and, and such excitement. But this is what the writer's talking about. That's what the songwriter is talking about. He says, I'm chasing after you. He's talking about what are you chasing after? He's saying chase after righteousness. And you say, well, pastor, what is righteousness? I'm glad you asked. I knew you were going to ask me that. Yeah. Righteousness is being in a right relationship with the will of God. So you're chasing after what God wants to, you to have. And so when you're chasing after that, he's saying that you're going to have extended favor because you're chasing after what God wants you to have. And the first thing that you have to have is a right relationship with him. And you can only have that if you're in a right relationship with him through Jesus Christ. So if you're chasing after Jesus Christ and it says his disciples, he's saying, follow me doing everything that I'm doing and, and being everything that I'm being. Now watch this here, because righteousness, when you're chasing after it, uh, we have that kind of confused because some of us are are being righteous. How do you be righteous? Well, you can be righteous by saying, I believe that Jesus lived, that he died, that he rose from the dead. You accept him as your savior. So you're being righteous, but you don't do righteous. Say, ouch. Yeah, yeah. Now, let me take that back. You don't do righteous in every area of your life. And, 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 and it's not that you don't know that it's right. 
It's just that you don't think you need to do that because you're a being righteous. See, we can be some of us can be righteous at work. We can treat people nice and, and they just think we're so holy and we're so kind. And, and, and some of us can be righteous in our deeds. We serve, we sing, we usher, we, we host, we, we park in lot, we, we preach, we teach, we pray. Oh, we, we, could, we, we do righteous things. But if we dug a little deeper, uh, we're not righteous in our bedrooms. We're not righteous in our pocketbooks. Uh, we're not righteous in our relationships. But we want that extended favor. You can't get that because you're not chasing after you. How are you chasing them? That no matter. Come on. Stop, 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 lying, stop, 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 not you, not you, are y'all listening to this? So you can't be righteous and not do righteous. Now, then there are those of us who have it flipped. We do righteous things, but we aren't being righteous. Now, those people confuse you even more, right? Because a lot of them aren't even in church. They, they do better things than we do. They, they live moral lives. They don't cheat. They don't lie. They don't steal. They don't fornicate. They give money to good causes. They're, they're really good people. We have a hard time sending them to hell. But they don't know Jesus. So again, they're not having a right relationship with God in God's will. I know y'all looking at me strange. It is. Because they're not chasing after you. Y'all getting tired, ain't you? I'm, I'm trying to help you. How many of you say you want to be satisfied? You did, didn't you? Didn't you tell me you wanted that? How many of you say you are satisfied? See, only a few hands go up. So there's a big disparity there. All right. I'm satisfied. I, 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 and I don't say that. To, uh, can I use your phrase again to, to impress you, but to impress upon you uh, that you can have it. Uh, God's got enough for you, just like he does for me. Isn't that good about God? He's not short on blessings like he's going to run out. He's going to get right here and stop. Deacon Mar, you the last one. None of them get none. <laughs> They be hating on him at God's bless. They be fighting for them four chairs. If them the only four chairs that God bless, you have folks sitting on top of each other. They be stacked around. Uh-uh, I'm going to sit here. Uh-uh, I'm going to sit here. Watch now. Look at the text. It says now. So he's saying that that pursuit. So the key thing to remember, righteousness is, is what? To be, uh, to do right and to be right. That's your key point. One of your key points is to be right and to do right or to do right and to be right. You can't split them up. If you want to be satisfied, if you want that long favor, you, you can't be half and half. And that's like some stuff you put in your coffee. Well, what is it half of? Half of milk and half of what else? I don't put nothing that's half and half. Yeah, I mean, I, I either want 100 percent something. Yeah. Look at all them ingredients on it that says milk. No, it's not. If it was only milk, that's all it should say on the bottle, right? It's a milk and about, no, milk is probably about the last substance in there. It's got words I can't even pronounce on there. But look at the text now. Look at the promise to be satisfied. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. What he's saying is that you got the right pursuit. And when you're chasing the right thing, uh, you're going to have the right satisfaction. Some of your lives are jacked up right now because you're chasing the wrong thing. And that word thirst and hunger means every time you get thirsty or hunger, you go right back to what God says you should be doing with your life. You want to turn your whole life around. Start living by the word of God. I'm just reading the text. Look what it says. Now, he gives you a promise. He's given the promise to the people who pursue righteousness. Then we talk about the people who are the people. His disciples. How many disciples of Jesus we have in here? Okay. All right. How many of you want to be a disciple of Jesus? 
Just start doing what he says. Take him at his word. All right. Just believe him. His word is true. This is what he's saying. You might be half filled. Get some 50-50. Isn't that what the text says? What does it say? Will be filled. Will be. So, so look at the sureness of this feeling now. He's saying he it's, it's, not, it's not that you might be. Only God can talk in absolutes. So who's talking? Jesus. But who is he talking as? God in the flesh. He's saying now that if you follow me, now this has been very hard for Jews because Jews were only believed in one God. And so what he's saying here now that I'm standing in the position of Moses, but I'm sitting in the seat of God. You ain't catch it, but you will later. He's saying that I, I'm the voice uh, that just like you heard Moses speak. But Moses went on a mountain and talked to God. And then he brought down the word. He's saying, I'm up on the mountain and you are speaking right here with God. And he's saying, I'm telling you that I can take care of all your needs. He said that I can fill you up. And it's a guarantee. It's the secret to satisfaction. Now, now look at the size of the filling. Uh, it's filled. Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's full. He didn't say you're going to get 99. Then the old folks said 99 and a half won't do. No, he's talking about 100%. He's talking about a, a ooh, that is filled. But look at the satisfaction. When something is filled, you're satisfied. Yeah. When I think about his goodness and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm satisfied. Uh, why? Because I've got everything that I stand in need of. Now, now watch this. See, Jesus wasn't talking about the material world. He's saying that, see, most of us are chasing material things. When there's something that was called a material girl, well, that was way back when, back, and that was right before I was born. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but. We're caught up in this material world. We're caught up in this American dream. I've been there. I chased after all of that stuff. I went big. Yeah, it was either go big or see y'all going big too. See, y'all know. Yeah, yeah. I used to say if you can't run with the big dogs, see, look at you. Look at you. But God says, get things in order. He says, chase after me. Drop, drop, drop down, open your Bibles right quick, and, I, and, I, and I'm done. No, I'm not done, but I'm going to stop. But, but, but look at Matthew 6, and, and this is one of my favorite passages, 33. It says, seek first, seek first the kingdom of MasterCard. Seek first the kingdom of my career. Seek first the kingdom of my house. Seek first the kingdom of my car. Seek first the kingdom of my love life. Seek first the kingdom of my... Isn't that what it says? No, it says seek first. He's, he's, look what he's saying. He's saying there's nothing wrong with seeking other stuff, but you got to get it in order. He says when you put it in order, he says seek first the kingdom of God. He's saying that when you're chasing after me, chasing after what I want you to chase after, if we're using our collective potentials all together, he's, look what he says. He says then. Oh, isn't that what it says? Then. What, what, what that, that means that, that's a conditional thing. He's saying if you do this, then. He says, I'll add a few of those things to you. Oh, oh what, are, what, are the, what are the things? Well, when you read verses 25 through 32, he's saying that why do you worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to wear and what you're going to drink and where you're going to live? Why are you worrying about all of that? Some of you are sitting right here now worrying about how you're going to make it. But he's saying... Stop worrying about that stuff. He said, then your father know. Matthew 6, 8, your father knows already what you have need of. Oh, that ought to make somebody shout right there. Uh, isn't it good to know that God already knows? Uh, before you even ask God, God already knows what you stand in need of. Uh, before you even get down on bending knee, God already knows. He, he already knows what you desire. He already knows what you need on the inside. But he's saying chase after me. He says when you chase after me. He said and when you do it with a full heart. He says I don't need you to be hot nor cold. He, said, he says I'd rather you be hot or cold. He says I don't need any lukewarm Christians. 
I saw y'all looking at me strange when I'm talking about raising $25,000. We ought to be able to do that easy. See, I didn't get enough amen. You're scared to trust him. The reason you don't have is because your hands are closed. He says, open up your hands and open up your heart. And he says, chase after me. I got some witnesses in here. I'm not the only one. Anybody else in here? God's been good too. Stand on your feet if you know that. If he's been good to anybody, you ought to be able to say hallelujah. And if he's ever blessed you anytime, you ought to say thank you, Lord. You ought to be able to praise him for who he is. He's a good God. He says, now, if you chase after me, come on, sing it for me, Melissa. Come on, chase after him now. If you really mean it, if you really mean it with your heart, you ought to be able to sing this song and really mean it because God says, come on. Come I'm come chasing after you. I'm chasing after you. Come on now. No matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. Come on, come on, come on. Chasing you, Lord. No matter. What, 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 no matter. You, more more. Yeah. I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. More and more. How many of you need it more and more? Come on. Come on, raise it up. Do it like you had the club. Come on. No matter what I have to do. Come on. Get your groove on. Come on. Play that softly. Just keep standing on your feet. Just play it softly. Keep standing on your feet. Jesus is telling us, just as he told them then, he says, I can satisfy all your needs. Some of you right now, you're hurting in your home. You're hurting in your heart. Because you've been chasing after the wrong stuff. Oh, I know. I'm not just talking about something I read in a book. I chase stuff. And every time I thought I was satisfied, I would end up being empty again. Now, I don't have near the stuff that I was chasing. Oh, but I got joy in my heart. Because I know that God says, Herb, if you're chased after me, I'll supply all your needs according to his riches. Now, the last time I look and I'm getting ahead of myself, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, ah, and all who dwell in it. So I, I dwell here and he owns it all and he knows what I have need of. So I'm going to invite you, if you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I'm going to call my officers forth. I want to give you an Hi, my name is Herb Redrick. I'm the lead pastor here at First Missionary Baptist Church. I pray that God's word touched your heart today because our mission is to lead all people into a life-changing, ever-growing relationship with Christ. If you have a question about the ministries or the message, please contact us at admin at fmbc-concord.org. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.